Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to another awesome mental health check. Your struggle is part of your story. Celebrate every victory. Hallelujah. Well, I'm sure that you guys can see that I have actually curly hair today. It's because I have been allowed, now we're allowed to um, shower if we want to. So the indoor restrictions for Calgary. So if you are not from Calgary, basically what happened was we had a, a water main break, um, like a, our main feeder for our Calgary, the whole of Calgary's water busted about four weeks ago or so, three or four weeks ago. And uh, we were in a state of emergency with regards to that. And we also have um, outdoor restrictions that we're not allowed to water our grass and there's a fire ban on and stuff. But the indoor one was rough, let me tell you. So not gonna lie I literally washed my hair three times in the three weeks or whatever well I, it technically just ended yesterday so you know how that works anyways yeah and uh I'm telling you I should have some good uh things in um dry shampoo because boy oh boy did I use a lot of dry shampoo uh Thankfully, my daughter used to work for a uh, drug mart place here in in Canada. And so she would often try different kinds of dry shampoo. And if they didn't work for her, I would get them. And that was fine with me for this. But the only problem I had is that the, most stuff leaves a white cast when you have dark hair so it's really difficult to find stuff that doesn't leave a white cast even and if you're going to say a specific brand that has the color like it's a colored dry shampoo and stuff like that so it's a like say you get dark brown or whatever even that one leaves a white cast in your hair so <coughs> pardon me it was difficult but on the other side of things in all honesty and I'm just going to say this to you guys so if you have dark hair and you need to use dry shampoo spray it in your hair rub it in your hair then use a towel and put a towel in your hair and what that does is it takes the white cast off but it also sucks up any grease that maybe the dry shampoo has sucked out of your hair kind of crazy but anyway, that has nothing to do with this. But I just thought I would say that because, you know, we've had a number of weeks here and I've been able to try a few different things. And this is the stuff that I have learned uh, over the past little while. So that helped my mental health personally, because in all honesty, my mental health really struggled because... I am going to be totally honest with you guys right now, okay? I'm going to be honest and vulnerable, but one of my triggers is smells. And so if, for instance, I ever have like a body odor smell like armpits or something like that, it triggers me into um, something that I, I, I would prefer not to say, but I'm just saying there are some things that trigger us and that specifically was a trigger for me. So that whole time was very difficult. And yes, we did buy things to wash ourselves with, like for instance, baby wipes. I did, I bought a big box of baby wipes and we've been using that, which is great. And you do at least feel like you've, cleaned yourself your armpits and stuff like that but you know it's not always the most incredible clean ever they were allowing you to have like a three minute shower or those showers where you turn on the water get in get wet turn off the water soap up then turn the water back on and wash that off and etc etc so my husband had and and 
actually I'm, I'm very impressed with this, but he would have uh, 30 seconds in total of a shower, which is pretty impressive because you can do it. There was no warm water at all. He didn't have any warm water. He literally turned on the water and at whatever temperature it was at, was what it was at and he would soak himself down then turn the water off and then suds himself up then turn the water back on and wash it all off so I mean pretty impressed that he didn't wait for the water to get hot or warm or whatever whatever works I guess you know anyways if you happen to have a trigger like that 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 maybe you don't even know is a trigger for you think about it think about those things not that I want you guys to think about you know and live in a trigger or anything I feel like I have a hair on my mouth but it is good to you know review things and think oh wow I feel this when this happens so it can give you the opportunity and the clarity to see oh wow okay well this triggers this and I get propelled into that, that, that type of thing. That's what I was talking about um, a number of weeks ago. I think it was um, component number two on our last teaching where it was talking about triggers and how instead uh, I started praying that God would show me my triggers before they happen so that I would be prepared for them and know that they were coming because you can't always necessarily stop a trigger okay but if you know that they're coming you're much more better prepared and you can pray yourself towards the end goal of the finish line type of thing okay all right so we are on week five of this teaching boy has it been good? I sure hope you guys have been enjoying it and enjoying the questions to ponder and all of those things because, wow, I'm just going to quickly go back up. I'm just going to go back to the previous thing, which was shame, okay? And I just want to go over these questions to ponder one more time with you guys. If you haven't had time to work these things, that's okay because you have, still have another week that you can work this one and the next one if you want to if that's how it works best for you is to do it like two weeks at a time then do what you need to do okay so the questions from last week were how has shame impacted your relationships with god self and others breathe deeply and allow holy spirit to reveal to you the faulty messages formed because of shame and discover through god's word what is true so that I think is pretty huge and I'm glad if you guys were able to sit in that a little bit and really look at it. Today, like I said, we're on week five. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pray and then we're just going to get right started in this. So Lord God, I just want to say thank you for every person that is catching this today and that will catch it later. All of the people, Lord God, I just, I pray your hand upon them, Lord God, as they go through these things and help them through, Lord God, in Jesus name. Amen. All right. So week five, being whole, 21 days of overcoming relational trauma Today, we are going to be talking about forgiveness, okay? Now, remember, forgiveness can be very difficult for people. So if you need to do this for a couple weeks and then come back to the next one later, that's okay too. So just know that I am not expecting you to necessarily just go through every one of these things, unless that's how you're doing it. And you want to go through every single one first, and then really, you know, review stuff. That's okay too. So week five forgiveness, we're just going to get right into this. Okay. So it starts off by saying, forgiving someone does not mean you are okay with what happened. Okay. So remember that. That is very, very important and very huge for you guys to remember that you don't always have to be okay with what happened. But forgiveness is something for you more than anything. And you were going to hear a little bit more about this and why and all of those things in a second. So it says, we struggle with to, sorry, we struggle with forgiving those 
who have caused us pain because forgiveness feels vulnerable. Your idea is that forgiveness means approval or acceptance of the behavior. And no, that is incorrect. This goes on to say, no, forgiveness means your freedom mentally and emotionally. So that's why forgiveness is so huge. Okay. Now, forgiveness is one of those things that absolutely, if you can do it, just forgive. Again, like it says, it doesn't mean that you have to be okay with the trauma that you sustained by them, okay? Or the things that have happened from that specific thing that they were doing or whatever. It doesn't have to mean that you're okay with that. But through time, you will get past it because you have the freedom and you've opened up space basically inside yourself to be able to go forward in, in things. So forgiveness is, is important. So this goes on. It says, we also do not recognize we have the power to set boundaries. We've been talking about boundaries and how important they are. In other words, forgiveness is granted by access denied truth okay setting boundaries and verbalizing your social emotional behavioral parameters for others is okay so it is all right for you to tell other people especially people that you are forgiving if say for instance just as an example because i'm just going to go with this on the simplest example i can give with you or to you right now is say for instance the person that you are forgiving continually breaks your boundaries, whatever they are, okay? I'm not going to name off a whole bunch of boundaries because everybody has different boundaries. But just imagine that that is exactly the thing. They could just continually break your boundaries like they're not important. And this is why it's important for you to verbalize uh to them that no this boundary will not be broken and if you try to break that boundary again just know that there will not be a response there okay there's nothing wrong with that because you have to protect you okay so just like i have to protect myself you have to protect you there isn't anybody necessarily i mean of course possibly your spouse or your siblings or your parents or whatever are helping to protect you and that's great i'm not saying that they shouldn't because they everybody should we should work to protect each other's boundaries protect each other from things so that we don't have to suffer trauma in a relationship right however unfortunately that is not always the case but that's why it's important for you to set your own boundaries for you to start protecting yourself okay now we're going to go on with this because I really would like to say uh, what I want to say, but I know that it says it in this teaching, so I'll go with it there. But otherwise, I would have been saying this already. So, okay, as Christians, we are called to forgive others as God has forgiven us. And that comes from Ephesians 4.32. And it says, here are some steps that can be helpful in the process of forgiving others. Okay, so now in these steps that we're going to go through, you are going to see, and I will let you know what I was going to say, because I will elaborate on it, okay? So the first step is acknowledge the hurt. It is important to recognize and acknowledge the pain that we have experienced because of someone else's actions or words. Absolutely, okay? This is number one because it is important for us to look at that specific pain and say, okay, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't like this very much because it really caused hurt in my inner soul or who I am or whatever. It really caused hurt. So I have to acknowledge that hurt and, and then look at it and say, okay, well, where do I go with this? Which we're going on to the next one. Number two, choose to forgive. This is the part that I was going to talk about. 
choose to forgive. Let me just read it out what it says on here and then we'll talk a little bit more. It says, forgiveness is a choice, not a feeling. We must make a deliberate decision to forgive the person who has hurt us, even if we do not feel like it. Okay, so in acknowledging the hurt, sometimes it can bring up even more hurt and it can bring it to a place of, it's like, it's brand new broken spot or a hurt spot or whatever, okay? And so that can be really difficult. So that's why it is important to choose to forgive. Just like, and I've said this to you guys, I don't know, countless times, how, how love, for instance, it is important for us to choose to love. Because if we let forgiveness, for instance, or love be in emotion, we will never do it because say, for instance, um, you're married and you have the love emotion. Of course you do. At first you were just, you're so in love with that person and all you can think about is how special they are and stuff like that. But the second that they do something that causes a hurt inside of you, then you definitely lose that love emotion, that, that feeling that you have, right? And it's the same thing about all of it. So if they've hurt you, now that's why forgiveness is a choice, right? Because you have to choose to forgive them because that hurt is raw and it's broken and it it's painful. So the last thing that you want to do is live in an emotion there and say, uh, okay, I'm going to emotionally not think about it. Well, you can't. I, I will tell you that right now because you, you are a human being and you have emotions and you're going to be continually thinking about it. That's why it's important for it to be a choice. Just like love has to be a choice because you're not always going to feel that emotion for that person that you are loving. That's why you have to choose to love them even through the stinky. That's why you have to choose to forgive people even through the pain. Do you see how all of that comes together? To me, it is amazing when I get to read these teachings beforehand. Like I said, I've gone through this whole thing already, but it's like it's brand new for me every week regardless because I get to reread them and really look at them and say, wow, yes. Like I knew that it was going to say that we are to choose to forgive, but again, Again, this week reading it again, it was like, wow, yes, yes. Because in choosing to forgive somebody, then you choose to say, I forgive you. I'm going to remember the pain, which is important because it helps you to set boundaries properly. You don't want to feel that pain again. You want to forgive the person so you have set a boundary and you are acknowledging your pain. You're setting the boundary and you're verbalizing it to the person. So remember that because that's important for us to get through relational trauma. Okay, we don't want to live in relational trauma. And that's why forgiveness is so important in there. You see? Okay, so we have acknowledged the hurt, which is number one. Choose to forgive, okay, is number two. The third one is pray for the person. Praying for the person who has hurt us uh, can help us to see them through God's eyes and to extend grace and compassion towards them. Okay, why this is so important, okay, especially when you're in the center of hurt, okay, you have a brokenness, you have acknowledged it, you've chosen to forgive the person, but you're still remembering these things. It's why it's important to pray for the person. Pray that God would help you to see their goodness, help you through the things as you're praying for the person, okay? So pray God's will into their lives. That is the best thing that you can do. And perhaps that's the only thing at the time that you can do. Okay, because you are so hurt by the person you've chosen to forgive them. You have acknowledged their the hurt that they've caused and you're praying for them. So the only thing that maybe that you can pray is like, God, I just pray your will in their lives. That is okay because that is actually the best thing that you can do for a person is to pray 
God's will into their lives because God's will is always perfect for every single person. So that's important, okay? This goes on and like I said, okay, so we got acknowledge the hurt, choose to forgive, pray for the person and then now number four is let go of bitterness and it says holding on to bitterness and resentment only hurts us in the long run absolutely and that's this is where i was talking about when we choose to forgive we get freedom exactly this we don't want it to continue to hurt us that's why you choose to forgive so that you can be free you can have freedom okay if the other person chooses not to forgive that's on them that is not on you you are doing the best that you can do by choosing to forgive okay and then you will have the freedom that you require there okay and it says um resentment and only hurts hurts us in the long run we must choose to let go of our anger and bitterness and trust god to heal our wounds hallelujah because he will he will heal your wounds and soon as you follow these things after you've chosen forgiveness, you have acknowledged all of those things and you've been praying for pit, uh, the person and stuff like that. And then you're letting go of bitterness so that you can have the freedom. Honestly, God is in the healing business. That is, that is something huge for him. So he wants to heal us. So we have to trust that he will heal those things. And over time, those things will be healed in front of us. Not saying that you have to forget them. You can still remember those things, but you don't have to hold a grudge against the person. You don't have to keep that and say, remember when you did that? Because that's how you're getting rid of the bitterness and you're choosing to let God deal with those things, right? You see how that is? Okay, now we're on the very last one in this and it says set healthy boundaries, which we've been talking about and how important it is. And it says forgiveness does not mean continue to allow people to mistreat you. It is important to set healthy boundaries and protect ourselves from further harm. Hallelujah. That is the big part right there. So you set you go back to the beginning of this you're acknowledging the hurt you choose to forgive you pray for the person you let go of bitterness because you've been praying for the person you can't help but let go of the bitterness and then you're setting healthy boundaries which you are verbalizing to the person that has hurt you okay you have forgiven them and you set healthy boundaries and you tell them look at this boundary i will not cross it from this point forward or whatever if you have at this point you can just say i can't because it just causes too much hurt in my life so i'm not going to cross this boundary and there's nothing wrong with that as a matter of fact that is healthy to do we all have to do stuff like that in saying that i was just thinking about for instance um tuesdays tuesdays are the only day of the week that i get with my husband it is very important that I set boundaries there, okay? So we both have set boundaries that we we don't just go on to our phone or onto social media. We don't answer texts. I mean, we look at them. And if they're important enough that we have to break our boundary, then you break your boundary because, you know, especially for Pastor Don and I, because we are pastors. So if somebody requires us, then of course we will break that boundary because that is one of those boundaries that can waver, okay? But there are specific things that are set in stone, like I said before. So one of the biggest boundaries that I have is that I do not look at other men ever. I don't. I just choose not to because I love my husband and I want to only see him. Okay? So that is a huge boundary for me. But the boundary of being able to say, okay, well, we are the pastors, so sometimes we have to check things. But I don't answer texts. I don't do any of those things unless they're import imperative that we do have to. Now, most of the time, you guys know as well as I do, that most texts are really nothing and all they do is cause stress or frustration for us sometimes so sometimes we have to have a day where we say no we're just not going to answer that of course 
you have your boundaries, okay? But for me, that is something that is important. So I did not answer my cell phone texts at all during that time because I think it's important for me to spend the time with my husband. Do you see what I'm saying there? All right, so we're basically done this specific teaching. So grab your journal, your notebook, whatever it is. And I did not give you the um, scripture verse yet on purpose because this one is such a big teaching. I wanted you guys to just get right into it with me. And then at the end, I'm going to give you everything that you need. Okay. So number one, I'm going to give you the uh, scripture that goes along with this and it is Matthew 6, 12. So read that and get it into your spirits with regards to this. Okay. And then if you need to rewatch this teaching, that's okay too, but get ready because I'm going to give you the questions to ponder right now. And then we're going to pray and all the good stuff that goes with that. Okay. So the questions to ponder are, what is your idea of forgiveness and what does God say about forgiveness? Now, how do you deal with that one specifically? Write down your idea and then go into Google. I'm not even joking. Google, Google can do so much. You can Google, what does God say about this specific thing that you, let's say, for instance, for your forgiveness, you maybe are the person that is like, forgive, you forgive, but you always have that weary feeling where you're like, mm, you did this. Well, maybe you need to read about that. What does God say about that? Okay. The next one is, are they congruent? Okay. So do they go together? Like what it says, what is your idea of forgiveness? And what does God say about forgiveness? Important. Do they go together? Your thoughts versus God's thoughts. And it's an interesting thing. Okay. Um, then it goes on and says, what hinders you from walking in total forgiveness? And then the very last part of this is allow the Holy Spirit to minister a hope and a future to you. Just like it says in Jeremiah 29, 11, that he knows the plans that he has for us to give us a future and a hope. So, of course, that's my paraphrase, but... If he wants to give you a future and a hope and he has forgiveness for you for your sins, then we need to be able to give forgiveness to others too, right? All right. So if you guys have not subscribed yet, then please subscribe. We would love to have you as part of our family. We're, you know, growing. We're growing here and on our Instagram and on our Twitter. So you can find us. The information is in the description box below. If you want to follow us on those other social media platforms, that would be great. We also have our email address in there if you want to reach out to us that way. So it's a Gmail account. It's uh, mhcyourstory at gmail.com. So message us if you want to. We would love to hear from you as well. And also, if you guys are just in need of some phone numbers to help you through whatever you're going through, then check out the description box below because we always share phone numbers and whatnot, whether like somebody actually sent me phone numbers for all of the countries that we could find at the time. So if, if you don't see your country on there, or your specific emergency number, let me know and I will put it in there. I will put it in our description box because we think that it's important, okay, to give you all the resources that we can give you for that. All right, so let's pray. Thank you so much, Lord, for all of the people that have watched today. I pray that you would really help them through learning forgiveness and being able to um, envelop that and have it in their own lives in Jesus name. Amen. All right, guys, we will see you next week. Bye for now.